You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. You guys know where to go to get more access, more content on top of what you're already getting every day there on the network, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Exclusive shows like Options Oddities coming up a little bit later today, as well as pro Q&As. The big giveaway, it's July, so we have to look back and do the giveaway soon. I think probably uh, next week we'll get it all set up for the big giveaway for the June Options Insider Pro Trading Crate. So you want to get your name in that hat. So get in there, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to begin that journey. Let me apologize last week as well. We had a bit of a bit of a last minute schedule change. So of course there was no volatility views last week. Believe me, I would have much rather have been here doing the show. <laughs> but alas, uh, unexpected things arose that took me away from the microphone last week. But we're back here this week, raring to go. Got a great crew joining me this week, including let's go first to the Southern Volatility Mecca, where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to Volatility View, sir. Hey, Mark. Glad to be here. Excited to be here. Uh, interesting day in the markets in that it's boring, which is uh, new and exciting. Yeah, yeah, a nice refreshing change of pace. <laughs> we are heading into that, uh, that holiday weekend. Yet again, another, another holiday weekend here. So, uh, yeah, markets, probably a lot of people are already heading out of town and taking their paper with them. Uh, but you know who didn't head out of town? He waited to do the show. We had to bump him from last week, but we got him back again this week. He is the flow master himself, a.k.a. Mr. Henry Schwartz, a.k.a. I don't know what your title is over there at SIBO now, sir. You have a very long and complicated title over there. No, that's not. That's not good. I'm, the, I'm the head of market intelligence in the data and access group within SIBO Global Markets. So it's not that long. There we go. I knew it was something along those lines. <laughs> and, and I'm still the flow master. You'll always be the flow master to us, sir. 
As we keep on rolling, it is time to commence the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody, welcome to the volatility review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was and indeed still is from a vol trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity perspective. And coming into the start of the show, as Mr. Meatball mentioned, it's kind of a heck of a lot of not much, quite frankly. We are seeing some red on the screen again, ever so slightly, nothing compared to the aggressive sell-offs we've seen in recent market sessions today the s&p off about a third of a percent dow off about a quarter of a percent and nasdaq off about six tenths of a percent uh, weirdly enough obviously we were off for last week so going back to two weeks almost all of the vol products were quite literally unched when we kicked off the show today that's that's very rare especially for that long of a period of time two weeks to come in to the show and it's like nothing has changed <laughs> Spikes when we kicked off the show was 27 and a half. That is literally exactly where it was when we kicked off the show two weeks ago. A VIX Cash, 27 and a half as well. Same deal. Unched from where it was two weeks ago. So yeah, that's uh that's a bit of a rarity in the vol space in and of itself. You know, if you've been listening to this show for a while, trading vol for a while, you wait five minutes and vol is gonna go somewhere. And the fact that we're pretty much at exactly the same levels as two weeks ago is Bit of a rarity, but let's go out here. VVIX, the vol of vol continuing to trend lower. No surprise, we are seeing a bit of a quiet session heading into a longer holiday session. So uh, not a longer holiday weekend, I should say. So not a lot of vol to be expected. VVIX reflecting that down five points to about 88. So again, back below that magical triple digits level. The Viking, aka V-Spike, so another measure of vol of vol. Was that about a 109 when we kicked off the show? That's down 12 points from where it was a couple of weeks ago, but also rebounding off a new all-time low for the product, which it set just a couple of days ago, June 28th. It hit 103.63. That's the lowest it's ever been since the product launched last year. So we were seeing record lows in V-Spikes just a couple of sessions ago. So all that leading up to the fact that we're not seeing a heck of a lot of vol on the screen heading into the weekend, which again, should come as no surprise. Let's go around the horn. Let's start because we had to bump him so rudely from last week. Let's start in the Mayax hot seat this week. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, a lot to unpack in these markets, sir. What is lighting up your tape this week? Uh, I mean, you're right. It's, it's funny that things really have calmed down. And, and it's, it's an interesting time because, you know, volatility, you know, we, we got up there, right? We got up, you know, above 30%. And, and it was, you know, everybody was... You know, I don't. There wasn't any panic, but you know, vols in the in the the low 30s definitely makes people very very nervous. But then you know, things have quieted down. The market hasn't quite bounced. We had a couple we had a couple up days, and and then you know what you see now is we've had a couple kind of flat days. You know, and, and like Mark Sebastian said, it's it's just a little bit boring. You know, you also you're going into a three day weekend, and I think probably you know 25 percent of the industry is on vacation already. So there's there's not a ton going on, but um, you know, for for what I look at, it's been a very notable shift, you know, um, you know, over the last couple of months from you know the the single stock options and, and you know a lot of that kind of speculative meme type of stuff uh, back into things that are a little bit more traditional, right? It's, it's the pendulum came on back, and so what we've seen is you know heavy index volume and heavy ETF volume, and single stock volume has has really dried up uh, as, as I think a, you know, a big portion of the, the trading community, especially the, the retail trading community, is kind of trying to reassess what, what's going to work for them. So you've been watching all the flow for these last few months, sir, and including in the vol space. Anything really crazy stand out to you? You were watching it come across your tape at Trade Alert and saying, hmm, that's, that's crazy. That's unexpected. Any interesting trends or developments along those lines, sir? I, I mean... The, the what was most interesting to me was you know the, there's an assumption that as we sell off volatility implied 
of all, is going to pick up, right? And you're going to start to get uh, some dislocations and some panic. And we didn't see that. We didn't even see that on some of these days where the market was down 2%. So it's, it's not, it's funny. It's not so much a matter of seeing, you know, a couple really big specific trades or points of, of order flow that we can point to as it is that the, the way the order flow and the way the market has behaved, it's been, um, you haven't had the panic. You haven't had, I mean, you have, you actually have some people, um, complaining that their hedges aren't getting them as much of a bang for the, for their buck because you know people that are long puts into a market sell off obviously the strike of the the put you know the, the fundamental purpose is is going to provide value but people usually get a boost in implied vol too right so you get kind of the double whammy and that hasn't happened uh in in it really hasn't happened this year and so that's a, that's a little different from from historically what we've seen, where you know market sells off two percent, and you you know that VIX is going to be up you know two points kind of thing. Um, it, that 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 connection is is uh, is not as strong as it's been. I don't know. Mark Mark Sebastian's probably seen the same thing. Mr. Meatball, then I shall toss it to you, sir. What is lighting up your tape, and and what are your thoughts on what Henry was just laying down, sir? Yeah, I mean he's right. The, this is starting to look a lot like. The first half of 20, uh, 2002, where we saw the market really decline uh, nearly 20%, and yet VIX never really took off. It, at the very end of that selling, we finally saw people get worried, and vol, you know, when, when the S&P finally broke, I want to say uh, into the 900s, we finally saw some panic, and VIX make a run at you know, 45-ish. Uh, and we might be in that same situation where it, the the real volatility in the market is not on the sell-offs, but on the rallies. And we have a VIX that hangs around 30 because the market is moving that much, but doesn't get a, a giant lift um, until we get some sort of panic and break some sort of major level. Maybe that's in the in somewhere around, you know, several at least 10% lower than here where people start to worry. Um, that, that's kind of my, my best guess. Uh, maybe Apple starting to, to really soften up is something that takes out the market. But we are not seeing any, any real panic in this market. As we sell off, it, 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 it again, really looks a lot like uh, post-September 11th, the stock market. So for the little history, uh, the day after September 11th, when markets did finally opened, I believe that was the 14th, uh, vol popped, the market dropped, we got a, v, a little V bounce, and then the market began to slowly, grindingly sell off over the course of 10 months, uh, finally turning around when some, sometime in, uh, I want to say August, uh, July was when we saw some major selling. And over that call it a 10 month period, uh, the market gave away 25% of its value, but VIX never really took off. Uh, and then at the very end, we got that pop. So that's kind of what it looks like. Henry, you, you were on the floor. You were one of the, uh, the uh, you were a, 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 a Taz, not a Taz Ranger. What did they call that? What were you? You were a uh, one of those people that, that uh, crushed people on auto X. Um, oh, a raised bandit. He was a raised bandit. You were a raised yes. bandit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you were a raised bandit back then. Uh, do you kind of remember that period? And and what do you think? Does it kind of feel the same way? Uh, I was a raised bandit, and it was kind of funny. And it involved a lot of phone calls uh, to Fidelity, where you you have to beg and scream and and get them to to get you what you were supposed to get because it it wasn't quite always the true electronic execution. Um, you know, I agree. It's, it's like I said, it, it's, it's been an orderly decline. And, and, you know, I've, you know, some of the, some of the people I listen to, uh, uh, some of the, the good strategists kind of look at that and, and, and kind of use that as, as a reason why maybe we, we haven't really seen the bottom. I, I don't, I'm, I'm more optimistic than that, but um, the, you know, the fact that, you know, we can have, you know, back to back to back 2% sell off and, you know, fine, you know, VIX gets up into the thirties and everybody gets pretty depressed, but 
you don't have the dislocation, you don't have the kind of the markets blowing out. Um, you know, it, I guess it's, it's either, it either means a lot of people are just kind of uh, holding their breath or, um, you know, or maybe the liquidity is, is you know, just solid. And, uh, you know, at least we're coming. The one thing that, that I think is keeping people from really losing their mind is you know, we're coming out of, you know, such a strong, you know, bull run uh, that, you know, unless you, you know, unfortunately bought in, you know, huge in January, you know, you, you may still be sitting on you know, profits from six months ago. So uh, I think that's part of it. Um, uh, I, it. It's definitely, it's definitely an interesting time. It's, it's, it's to me, what's I think probably the most interesting is that the market shifted in January and obviously with, you know, the, the, the change in the fed and, you know, we went from, you know, strong, strong bull to, you know, a lot of people, you know, predicting, you know, recession and, and everything else that you're hearing about now. Well, Mr. Henry, allow me on behalf of all the victims of the of the raise bandits to thank you for the the hundred lots of hundred Delta Intel calls I had to choke down that were two dollars <laughs> away from the money by the time I got it on my screen. So thank you for that. A gift that just kept on giving out there, sir. But Mr. Meatball, it sounds like you're saying you think they really need to start killing the darlings. They need to come for the apples and all the other popular names. Do you think that's really going to be the catalyst that could kick us into another gear lower? Yeah, it, yeah, I think that's what it's going to take because Apple's still really, really sturdy um, and pretty stubborn. So, yeah, when Apple goes, the market goes. Um, I'm, I think when you talk about P.E. contraction, which is what we've been seeing, Apple was traditionally 15 to 18. It's still near 30. Uh, that would put it below 100 bucks. And if we get that P.E. contraction, then that is... As people sell Apple, that's the last hedge fund hotel. There's going to be problems. Yeah, you were talking about Apple at 100, I think, recently here. It's 136, almost 137 right now. So that's a, that's a pretty aggressive clipping if they do come for it at that level. But that would certainly, I think, spark a wee bit of panic if they do start coming for Apple. What do you think, listeners? They need to really start, start killing the darlings out there in the market for the sell-off really to take hold? Or do we need that? Uh, people were talking a couple of weeks ago, do we need that pop involved to really signal capitulation, you know, hit us up, let us know. You guys already voted a lot in our poll. The answer was kind of yes, and kind of a light pop involved up to around the 40 handle, which traditionally wouldn't be that light, but these days doesn't seem like much. <laughs> Let's get on out to the futures side of the fence. Uh, we've had uh, Matt McFarland, my ex on here many times talking about their new products and new projects they have going on in the world of um, spikes futures waiting for those ETPs to get listed and come online. That's really what they think is going to be the, the missing leg of that trifecta, the missing leg of that stool to really keep. Now you'll have the options and the futures and the ETFs to drive paper in both of the other two products. So once those go online, they expect a lot more futures volume coming down the pike. But looking at the VIX futures, when we commenced the show here, we saw the front portion of that curve was a little bit a little bit frosty, a little bit juicy. I'm sure if we react this right now, it'd be a little bit less. But coming into showtime, we had that July front future up about three quarters of a point and the AUG up more, up almost a full point, about 0.85 out there. So a little bit of juice there in that front portion of the the futures curve. Not quite backward yet, but looking looking a little bit juicier. Again, I'm sure if we re-ran it right now, it would look a little bit lighter. Mr. Meatball, anything catching your eye out there? in the vol surface this week yeah it's it's been you know we've seen vix get over the curve and hang out under the curve but the curve itself has maintained a pretty solid shape all week uh it's been in a contango and stayed in a contango all week and that has been you know kind of interesting and again i think points toward the fact there hasn't been any panic hasn't been any real fear in this market just movement and that's what's holding up vix right you can't really sell the VIX much lower than it is when we're seeing 2% drops and and a 27 VIX is pricing in about a 1.5% move a day. We've seen some of those moves way bigger than that interday. And on a day-to-day -day basis, we've definitely been pretty darn close. In fact, Realize Vol and a lot of nay and a lot of stocks, Realize Volatility is trading at above uh, implied. And, you know, VIX futures are kind of uh, pointing to that, 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 you know, implied may rally. 
Yeah, they're pricing in about a one point premium between July and October, pretty much exactly one point when we kicked off the show. We had a twenty eight eighty five in the July future and a twenty nine eighty five in that Oc future. So looking reminiscent of what we were seeing back a couple of years ago, not quite as steep. But remember back in in twenty twenty, listeners, we were all talking at the beginning of the year about that crazy premium they were pricing in around the election in that October future. Then, of course, other things happened in 2020 that took our eye off the election ball. But yes, early on in the year, it seemed like that's a bit of an aberrant premium they're pricing. And they're still pricing in some juice here for the midterms, about a point. And then it comes right back down again to uh, 28.85 again by December. So we go up a point from July (laughs) to October, then back down a point through December. So a nice little blip there right around the midterms. Mr. Henry, what are your thoughts on what you're seeing out there in the world of the VIX futures this week, sir? The same. I mean, it's interesting, you know, yeah, we've, we've pulled back from, from the true fear. And, you know, I think that there's, um, I don't know. It's kind of like we've gotten used to (laughs) this situation where rates are going to go up several percent in the next, you know, six months or so. And, and there's just, you know, bad headlines for multiple reasons out there. And, but the market's kind of, you know, I, I think like Mark said, you know, when we're seeing, you know, 2% moves, then the 30 VIX is about right. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is like the last few days, we haven't had those 2% moves, right? So, you know, we had 1% or even less. We had a couple of days, we barely, you know, market was almost flat. And that that's interesting. That puts some real pressure on, on you know, VIX futures when uh, you have a day where we, we, we close almost unchanged, but those, you know, those, those futures are pricing in a solid 2%. Uh, a day almost. So, um, you know, we'll be watching it, but you know, it's it, it's kind of like, you know, every time we get kind of a, a, a shock or a scary period like this, everybody tries to figure out if it's different this time, but you know, we go into contango, everybody freaks out. Uh, and then, um, so are we going to backwardation and, you know, things are scary and then it doesn't last that long. Um, I think it's interesting now, right? We're seeing a, a pretty prolonged period of VIX, you know, in the, in the 30 zone. So that's a little different. You know, a lot of the other charts you'll see out there, it's like, okay, how quickly did we go back to a, you know, 17 or 18 or 19 VIX after a shock? And this isn't that kind of a situation, right? Everybody knows that they're watching the Fed for the, the next year and, um, you know, how the economic numbers come in is, is going to, people are going to be a little bit more um, scared in general, just, just kind of bracing for, from bad surprises here and there. So, um, you know, I think things are going to kind of stay here. I, I would kind of expect the futures term structure to get more flat ish than, um, than stay, you know, super contango. I mean, you also have the, you also have the, the long weekend type of effect, uh, kind of hitting the, the front end vault and summer. Yes. Those that double whammy of summer and a long holiday weekend also being felt on the volatility options front, not a lot of paper going up in spikes options right now. Still seeing the July pars, the 100s <laughs> are the dominant force out there in the OI and spikes options, which always brings a smile to my face. In terms of VIX options, kind of the same deal. Not a heck of a lot at all going up out there today, which explains why the ADB has ticked down since our last show two weeks ago. So going back a couple of weeks now, we're down to 475,000. That's down 9,000 from where it was two weeks ago. When I start breaking down the numbers for this week, you're going to see why we have been trending lower. And today is no exception. When we started the show, there were 207,000 contracts on the tape in VIX. I re-racked it just now, just in case anything had happened. We're up to 210,000. So a whopping 3,000 contracts have traded over the course of the last half an hour. Just a frame of reference, usually when we're doing this on a decently active day, we could easily see 100 plus thousand contracts go up in that time frame, if not more. And instead, we got a whopping three today. So a whole heck of a lot of nothing. Doesn't seem like we're going to make that ADV again today. We'll break down the numbers for this week in a second. First, let me break down uh, the top positions, such as they are out there in VIX options land right now. Cost you 127,000 contracts to break into the top 10 right now. That gets you to the July 22 puts. By the way, the top 10 positions, 60, 40 calls over puts. So down slightly from where it was two weeks ago. We were leaning harder to the calls than 70, 30 right now, 60, 40. So it's it's getting close to a pick 'em again out there. So number 10, buck 27 of the July 22 puts, the first of four puts in our top 10. Number nine, 136,000 of the AUG 75 calls. Again, that, that 75 strike. Someone has discovered that strike and they just love it. You'll see 
as we go along. There's more of it here, listeners. Number eight, 142,000 of the SEP 75s. Number seven, now we have a little put strip here. Number seven, a buck 46 of the July 24 puts. Number six, 149,000 of the July 20 puts. Number five, a buck 53 of the July 25 puts. Then the rest of it is all calls all the time. Number four, 156,000 of the July 35s. One of the few, dare I say it, relevant call strikes, kind of the only one in our top 10 this week. And 35, that's still kind of up there. <laughs> Number three, 175,000 of the July 60s. Number two, ah, here we go, 217,000 of the July 30s. So that's a little better. And then number one, with about the same size bullet it's had for a bit, it's the Ox 75s, 349,000 contracts on the tape. There. Remember, they were 250 not that long ago, and they hung out there for a while. They have obviously piled on more and then kind of been hanging out around this 350 level for a little while out here. So not a ton to unpack, but some stuff on the tape this week. Let me go on the horn really quickly and just just break down a kind of a kind of quiet week. Then I'll get each of your thoughts on what we're seeing out there, such as it is this week. Today, like I said, 210,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the most active contract today, 15,000 of the July 45s. That tells you what a light day it is when 15,000 is the most active contract in VIX land. You know, that, that's kind of Kind of nothing. Followed by almost 14,000 of the Nov 80s. You know, there's got to be a ridiculous strike in there somewhere. Today, it's the Nov 80s, 14,000 of those. Number three, 12,000 of the July 25 puts. Number four, 11,000 of the SEP 75s. Back to those. And if you need more 75s in your life, another 10,000 of the OX 75s going up today. Thursday, we had the busiest day of the week, 839,000. It seemed like we were on pace to maybe hit a million there ever so, ever so briefly. We were flirting with it. I thought maybe on the odd block. And on the option block yesterday, maybe we would hit that, but we did not. 839,000. Uh, this is more like VIX here. The big dog yesterday, 145,000 of the Nov 80s, yet again. <laughs> uh, followed by 119,000 of the Ox 75s. Is he putting more on the Ox 75s, or is he going to is he going to add some 80s, roll to the 80s perhaps? Uh, the Ox 75s are pretty much our, our size position out there. It looks like he was adding yesterday. And then we have uh, 79,000 of the Aug 23 puts. Uh, 76,000 of the AUG double calls, a.k.a. the 55s, and rounding out the top five yesterday, 38,000 of the July 25 puts. That bottom of the top five yesterday is going to eclipse pretty much anything else we talk about here for the rest of the week, so we'll go quickly. Wednesday, an anemic 209,000 contracts. So we've already exceeded that today, so I guess that's saying something. Wednesday was a whole lot of nothing. The big dog on Wednesday, the OC 40s, 22,000 of those, followed by 22,000 of the OC 60s. Looks like a bit of a vertical going up on Wednesday. And then we'll just skip out on the rest. Not a heck of a lot. Tuesday, 339,000, so a little bit more respectable. The big dog on Tuesday, 20,000 of the July 30s and 19,000 of the SEP 30s. So maybe maybe a bit of a roll there. Uh, Monday, 311,000 contracts. The big dog on Monday, the July 35s doing 19,000 contracts, followed by the July 65s. There we go again. 14,600 of those, then 11,000 of the July 25 puts. So... Most of this week, with the exception of Thursday, listeners, a whole lot of nothing on the tape. Mr. Henry, I guess we'll start with you. You are watching the flow day in, day out. First off, we haven't had you on the show in a while. So I want to get your thoughts on this proliferation of, shall we say, exaggerated upside in VIX. We have the 75s, we have the 80s, we have the pars, we have the 110s, the 120s. You name an out-of-the-money call strike, and it's doing size these days. So I'm curious your thoughts on that trend, if you've noticed it, if you have any any insights there. And then, B, anything else lighting up your tape in an otherwise quiet week? Sir? Uh, well, I agree. If we had done the show yesterday, there'd be much bigger numbers to play with. Yeah. Um, the Like I said, the, the weekend has started, I think, for the, the VIX traders. And actually, I was in Ch- Chicago yesterday, and, uh, and well, most of this weekend got a tour of the new trading floor. So I got to... I had to look down onto the into the brand new VIX pit, and it was kind of even even though we had that hundred thousand lot print, uh, it was actually kind of quiet. So um, <laughs> the the um, the upside strikes, I, I I do watch the flow. I have not had the luxury of actually talking to um, any of the traders on the other end of those trades. Um, you know, my guess is that you know there's in a lot of the meetings I've had in the last six months, there's a lot more quantitative. Um, you know, the trend is towards quantitative trades that you know with heavy duty backtesting on them, and away from kind of some of the 
spec stuff or, or you know, the, the old fashioned, you know, the good old trades where, you know, somebody kind of puts on a trade because they want to. So my guess is that these upside strikes um, are, are back testing. Well, I honestly, the, the hundred thousand lot yesterday was, was a closer. Um, I don't know what the strategy is. Um, but, but my guess is that, uh, it, 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 it either looks good in a, you know, on, on the back testing for the desks that are, that are putting it on. Um, or, you know, I, I mean, you know, we always talk about how, you know, far upside VIX, you know, calls are basically the same as, SPX disaster puts, right? Every, you know, those are going to explode in the worst case situation. And, you know, if somebody likes the, the risk reward there better than they do on the, uh, you know, in the equivalent little tiny other money put, then, um, then that's what they're going to trade. So I don't know the reason they're trading it, but, you know, yes, there, there's obviously been, uh, you know, a lot more action up there. Uh, you know, and it's interesting because it's, it's, it's not so much in the form of those, you know, one by threes and things we used to see. So still working on it. Yeah, vol paper, VIX paper tends to come in trends, and there's definite trends. Like you mentioned, we have seen periods where it's it's all one by twos all the time, you know, and it's all these other types of trades. And it seems like in the last six or so months, all these funds have awakened to the majesty of far out of the money calls in VIX, and they're just loading up on them just to hell in high water here. Just tons, tons of these far, far out of the money. We used to think a 45, 50 call was out of the money. They're doing double that and then some out there these days. And you're right. They do play a kind of a bit of an analogous role to these far out of the money S&P crash puts, but maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit better, uh, better payouts in some of those environments. You know, VIX can't explode and you don't need to get to 110 listeners to have your 110 calls looking much better than they were at, let's say, 25. Uh, Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts? We talked about this before, this proliferation of upside. I did. We did hear some rumors last week. We weren't able to do the show last week. We did hear some rumors. Maybe fifty cents starting to reemerge. What are your thoughts on that? And then also, what are your thoughts on the, what it was a pretty much anemic week outside of Thursday, sir? Yeah, um, you know, it was a grind. It was very anemic, other than some huge spreads. I, I thought it was interesting that you know a trader bought those puts. If you look at the way they this p- trader positioned themselves, they're they're positioning for maybe a quieter July and August. And um, maybe some fireworks coming in the fall rather than, uh, you know, summertime, despite the fact August has been a bit of a disaster for markets over over the life of, uh, of August. Pretty interesting stuff. Probably. Yeah, I, it's some sort of credit fund. It's got to be. I don't know exactly who, who or what. I doubt it's 50 cent, but uh, definitely sets up for some sort of, you know, they're definitely have been repositioning themselves. And um, moving out the duration of, of this hedge position. So just something to keep an eye on. Intriguing stuff. Let's see what's intriguing out here in the land of our newest additions to the vol space, a.k.a. SVIX and UVIX. SVIX, of course, the inverse vol product, UVIX, UVIX easier for me to say, UVIX, <laughs> the uh, 2X levered VIX product out there. And SVIX, when we came into the show at around 1040, up about three quarters of a point. Makes sense. We're starting to see a VIX come off a little bit now. Uh, not a lot of paper, which has kind of been the problem, uh, bedeviling SVIX for a while. Only 135 contracts on the tape. That said, the ADV has ticked up to 681. It's up about 100 contracts more it was this time a couple of weeks ago, but still not even 700 contracts. So not a lot to parse. I'll just look really quickly at the top SVIX position. We've got 800 of the, uh, of the 12 calls out there right now in July. That's the big dog out there. So read into it what you will. Henry, have you been watching, you know, they've got a lot of headlines when it first launched this inverse VIX product. Obviously, everyone was equating it to XIV and all the issues that happened there. We haven't really had you on since these products have launched. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on them? Do you think the, the SVIX and UVIX, its counterpart, are they bringing something to the table? And then also, what are your thoughts on the fact that SVIX still not to lighting up the tape from a volume perspective? No, these are taking a while to 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 uh, kind of gain some popularity. I, I'm a huge fan of a growing ecosystem, you know, of, of products, meaning things that people are going to trade and arb against each other and, and hand, you know, and, and kind of try to take advantage of relationships. You know, I think that's why the, the, you know, the crypto universe is, is really interesting, right? Because you have ETFs, futures, and you got spot, and you got options. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the VIX 
related products uh, are the same. So, you know, I think that there's, uh, but, but I think they, you know, they, I mean, you know, if, if we see that, you know, overall, you know, if, if VIX option volume is quiet, like today, you know, you don't quite have enough for things to play into each other. Um, I think it'll, I think it'll, I think it will gain steam. Um, you know, maybe right now people are just kind of taking a while, you know, I would also imagine, um, you know, the, the smaller traders who probably are, are kind of early adopters of these kinds of trades, uh, they might not have had the best uh, spring. And so uh, I think, you know, and we see it in the, in the volume out there uh, that, you know, people, people are, are not doing as much as they were. So um, I do have, when you, when you have time, if we say it's a little time for the end, I ran some stats since we're right at the middle of the year and I can give you a little update on market wide. Uh, kind of volume. Yes, we are at a, at a good spot. So we'll get to that in a couple seconds. I like that. Hold on to that for a second. Cool. We'll pay off the rest of our uh, our crazy vol products here. Let's first go out to uh, Uvix. The 2X levered product has been doing more paper. That continues to be the case today. 1,310 contracts on the tape, even though the ADV is almost literally unchanged. I think it's one contract different from what it was two weeks ago. 3364 out there. Uvix, by the way, 17 and a quarter when we kicked off the show, up nearly a full point, about eight tenths of a point out there. So obviously doing a little bit more paper. Let's do a quick top five in UVix, and we'll get the meatballs thoughts on all this madness. Number five, a thousand of the Jan 15 puts followed by number four, a thousand as well of the set 15 puts. So maybe a bit of a calendar there. Number three, 2001 of the Dece 18 puts number two, 2300 of the July 27 calls and number one with a decent size bullet, about 3,800. So a little more than the ADV of the July 19 calls, which looking where we are right now, we could we could play with that by the time we hit the July expiration. In terms of action, say it looks like the big dog looks like a 1500 lot of the July 16, 17 put spread went up, but that's driving a lot of the paper. Obviously, that's 3000 contracts right there. So that's a it's a good chunk of the paper out here. But uh, intriguing stuff out here. Nonetheless, Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts here on SVIX? continuing to struggle to attract a lot of attention while Uvix doing doing some decent paper. Yeah, Uvix has has really taken off in terms of overall volume. Uh you know, it's doing what? 3 million shares a day now. Uh slowly stealing volume from uh UVXY. SVIX, you know, I think there's a lot of people burned and frankly in, in with the VIX progressively, you know, constantly in the the 20s. Uh, in the high 20s, low 30s, it's going to be very hard for a product like SFIX to take off. When that thing starts going up consistently, uh, at that point, you're going to probably see some uh, traders very interested in playing with SFIX. I thought those volume numbers sounded weird for UBIX listeners because that 1500 lot went up right as we were speaking pretty much. So that's why the total now for today for UBIX is actually 4,225 contracts. That makes more sense than the 1300 when you have 3000 contracts going up in a vertical by itself out there. So intriguing stuff, a little bit of paper hitting the tape. But speaking of a little bit, that's pretty much what you can call VXX right now as well. Is that a 23 when we kicked off the show down about 1.6 points uh, coming into today? We got 43,000 contracts on the tape. That's not a heck of a lot compared to the ADV, which is 69,000. That in and of itself is down 5,000 from two weeks ago. But it's also a pale shadow of what VXX used to do before all the Barclays madness started happening. This product used to rival VIX, used to eclipse VIX some days from an options perspective. Those tail wagging the dog days. These days, kind of a far cry from that. But there is still some paper out there in terms of the big dog out there is 109,000 of the AUG 16 puts. The top 10, by the way, all still all puts all the time. Nobody wants to touch a call on this thing for, I think, understandable reasons. Number two, we got 43,000 of the July 20 puts. Number three, 41,000 of the July 19 puts. Number four, 40,000 of the July 18 puts. And rounding out the top five in VXX, about 40,000 of the July 17 puts. In terms of today's paper, nothing big, really. About 3,000 of the July 20 puts, 20, excuse me, July 23 puts. And about 2,200 of the July 30 calls are the big dogs out there today. Mr. Henry, what are your thoughts on the fall from grace that we've seen out there in VXX and the fact that this this product that once used to rival VIX from a, a flow perspective is now kind of a pale shadow of its former self? Well, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, there's less to go around. And so, you know, all these, all these products are connected. Uh, you know, obviously, the, the VIX futures volume, 
uh, you know, had a big change after uh, the Valmageddon. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, I think, probably gave up on, on uh, that product suite probably for, uh, for the rest of their life. Uh, and so you're waiting for new, uh, new entrants. And, you know, like I said, there's, there's a lot of quantitative, you know, it, it, it's the, the, the growth on the institutional side has been in these quantitative investment strategies and not so much in the, the high touch or kind of concentrated positions or just big trades. That's not what we're seeing as much anymore. So uh, I think it takes time for kind of, you know, these new entrants to, you know, pick products that they want to trade. And then, you know, as, as, as you know, well, like, you know, liquidity kind of, you know, gets liquidity and, and flow and volume. And so once things start to get thin, you know, there's some momentum there to keep it that way. Let's head on out to uh, UVXY, see what kind of momentum we have out there. A lot of folks, including the meatball, kind of waiting for maybe some of those new products to start nipping at the heels of UVXY. Doesn't seem like it's happening yet, even though UVXY not exactly lighting up the tape today either. 14 and three quarters when we kicked off the show. It's up a little over half a point, about six tenths of a point from where it was. Two weeks ago, the ADV is right about where it was two weeks ago, 266. That's down about 3,000, so not much at all. Uh, today, we're seeing about 120,000 contracts on the tape, so kind of light, as you would expect. In terms of positions out there, it is mostly mostly puts out here with a few calls percolating in the top 10. Look at the quick. Let's do a top uh, top five, so we've got to get rolling. I want to get the Flowmaster. Flowmaster's mid-year update on here as well. 14,000 of the July Expiring on the first 14 puts, followed by 11,000 of the July 15 calls. 11,000 as well for number three of the July 15 puts. Number four, 11,000 as well. Got a bit of a tie here for two through four of the July 10 puts. Number five, 10,000 of the July 16 calls expiring on the first in the weeklies. Uh, Mr. Meatball, have you been uh, playing around in UBXY these days and uh, anything catching your eye out there? Yeah, you know, heading into this week, I thought, you know, it's a we're in a contango. It's traditionally a low of all week. I thought, you know, maybe it could uh, get a little bit of a rebound and, you know, uh, or a little bit of a tanking. And that did not happen. Uh, it's basically what slightly up on the week and um, option volumes continue to be pretty robust there. And uh, until we see some real liquidity in. Uh, in VIX itself, or in U- UVIX itself, uh, in the options, UVXY is going to be the place where people go to trade options. All right, listeners, now it is that time. We have a rare treat. Our rescheduling from last week actually works out because now we have the perfect time to have the Flowmaster join us for a nice mid-year update, a mid-year look back on the world of options. Obviously, June coming to an end, July 1st, now looking back at the First half of the year, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what were some of the trends and highlights that caught your eye so far in 2022? Uh, sure. So I, I ran the numbers right before, and it is great that it's, we have end of June right behind us. So uh, industry volume is just topping 5 billion contracts, uh, So, which is an average daily volume of uh, just over 40.3 million contracts a day. And that's a 6% on an average daily volume market-wide over the year before, which was a record uh, on top of the year before that, which was a record. So, uh, you know, so 6% growth is what we're looking at market-wide. But what's, what's interesting when you kind of look under the hood is uh, the, 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 between ETF options, single stock options, and index options, how that's shaking out, stock the single stock option volume, average daily volume is about 22.1 million contracts a day. That's down 12% from last year. So um, now it, it had exploded. It was from it went from about 16 million to 25 million uh, in from 2021. So that's come that, that's a decrease. So that the, the, the you know we're seeing less of that. That is really uh, you know I believe it's directly connected to the fact the market's pulled back and so much of that that retail single stock flow has disappeared because uh, those traders, the, at least the ones that were just kind of blindly buying calls into a bull market have obviously gotten uh, have lost their money or at least some of their money. Uh, the growth though, is if you look at the, the index volume, the index option volume now is running about 2.5 million contracts a day. So that's up 26%. 
uh, over the year before. That's the highest. I don't. It's. I don't think we're running at all time records because if you go back uh, around 2012, I think it's higher. But it, it's the highest in the last five years, which is what I grabbed. So 26 percent increase in, in index activity, and that is coming from, uh, like I said, the, the fact that we've kind of swung back into some traditional hedging. You know, is is has woken up. Um, and then also a lot of new stuff going on, right? Like, you know, Steve came up with the, the curb trading session, which means basically we don't close it at uh, 4.15 anymore. We pretty much go straight till five o'clock. And then you have this, uh, the, the global trading hours, which start at, I believe, 9 p.m. New York time and run all the way until the next morning. So, you know, the Sivo is moving to this 24-5 index trading uh, and we're kind of almost there. So that obviously helps volume as well. Uh, and then an ETF volume is up 44% from last year. Uh, so at least on an average daily volume. And that is, you know, that, that's kind of coming from the fact that you see a lot of rotation, right? You know, this, this you know, it, it's a few weeks ago, what everybody was talking about was people dumping out of the, you know, the COVID stocks and into the value stocks. Uh, and, um, you know, ETFs are, are a nice, efficient way to do that really quickly. So, um, so, you know, that, that to me, you know, it's, it's great. I, you know, I predicted 10 billion contract and it looks like we're tracking for the tracking on that. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting, and I, I know, you know, this is volatility views, but I, uh, you know, I will mention that the splits, you know, these 24 one splits, uh, are not quite doing much for volume, which we knew we weren't going to get a ginormous jump, but, um, I was a little disappointed, uh, you know, that, that we, we, you know, volume kind of option volume doubled or so. Uh, but, you know, on a 20 for one split, you kind of hope maybe you get, you know, 10 X for at least a month or two, but <laughs> we are we, seeing Amazon top in the volume list a lot now though. So that working at least there locally for Amazon. Yeah, but not to the multiplier that you, you kind of hope. Any other highlights, sir, that are resonating with you? Um, I'm keeping an eye on trading an occasional nanos option. Um, they still have some challenges in, in the market quality. We're, we're, we're working on that. But I'm actually, next time I go to Chicago, next, at the end of this month, will be to tape some nanos videos. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep playing around with those. I think they're an, an incredible learning tool. Uh, you know, when you can go trade a four dollar option, then it's actually a four dollar option. Uh, you know, instead of buying a, a you know cappuccino you can be like yeah you know what i'm gonna buy a call and kind of see how the afternoon goes and um I, I, they're, they're fun they really are fun to trade well, i'm glad to see that you are a fan of your own product so that's that's always a good <laughs> sign that's the first step if you hate your own thing then it would be no fun so henry accounting for all the flow out there in the nano not all right of it. now <laughs> have you guys experimented with the nanos yet listeners hit us up i know they're still they're still working on some volume out there, but have you dipped your toes even doing a one lot, as Henry was saying? Skip the cappuccino, pick up a one lot. Have any of you experimented with those? I'd be curious to hear your stories if that's the case. Hit us up. Let us know. Looking really quickly, we are at pretty much beyond the tail end of earnings season right now. So from an earnings ball perspective, everyone's kind of waiting for the next season to kick off to really take us into perhaps a high gear again. That said, there were still some names popping off this week. Nike on Monday, Bed Bath & Beyond, General Mills on Wednesday, Walgreens Boots Alliance, one of my favorite tickers, as well as Micron out there yesterday. If you want highlights from all that stuff, we do have the updated earnings move earnings move results and earnings season reports from our buddies over there at Orets. Available for you over there on the website, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab for you guys to sink your teeth into that. Also, some interesting new Single name reports. I do believe they dove deep into Micron and Walgreens Boots Alliance this week. So uh, intriguing stuff. If you want to see a lot more data than we get into just in these simple reports, it's a lot, really. It's really fascinating stuff. Then check out those individual deep dives. We have those up on the website for you as well. He's also We've also tweeted them out. So if you want to find links to those, that's an easy place to go over there at Options as we keep on rolling. It is time to get difficult. It is time to get dangerous. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. 
All right, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Ball, the portion of the show where we attempt, we struggle to determine what the Vol Gods hold in store for us for the coming week. Obviously, we were off last week, so we didn't have a chance to pay off our guesses from last week. Uh, we ran the numbers right before showtime. For last show, I was at a 31 and a quarter. Mr. Meatball was at a 2772. And Brian Overby, who joined us two weeks ago, was at a 3301. So he was feeling a lot more juice. I was feeling a wee bit more. Mr. Meatball feeling around where we were, maybe a little bit less at the time. And that actually looked all right. Spikes ended up going out actually exactly at the end of our showtime at 2736. So he was close to half a point away, within a half a point. So not quite within our margin of victory, but not bad. Mr. Meatball. Vix was at 27 and a quarter, so you're about exactly half a point away there. You're the closest. The rest of us were not exactly uh, lighting it up this time for last week. So that means, uh, Mr. Mark, I will give you the pride of place. Do you want to go first this week, or do you perhaps want to pick somebody else to go first? I will yield to the flow master and you, my friend, and I'll I'll take up the rear. Uh, as you like to do, but I won't go any farther with that joke. <laughs> Mr. Miss, it's a family show. <laughs> did, you made it too easy for me. I'm I sure did. We'll, we'll I probably, did. We'll that probably, is on me. That is definitely on you. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, you get the dubious honor of going first. What are you feeling for Val, Vix or Spikes, whatever you want to pick this time next week? I'll pick Vix, and I will pick 28.8. Interesting. By the way, I should pay off where we are exactly right now as well, so folks have some frame of reference. Uh, coming into the end of the show, listeners, we're at a, about a 27.10 in spikes. So, yeah, we're both spikes and VIX at a little bit north of the 27 level, listeners, which means Henry going a little bit higher this time next week. I don't fault that. I've, I've been on kind of mostly, mostly the upside tip for this year. It's worked out. I had a few bullseyes in my back pocket last week, not so much. I'm going to say, let's see, 27 and change right now. Coming off of the holiday, we're probably going to get some juice back, probably. How much? And then what will we have happen earlier in the week that will maybe lift us into the end of the week? I'm going to say we're going to be not that far from where we are right now. I'm going to say 27 double for this time next week. All right, Mr. Meatball, you got about a point and a third, roughly, between myself and Mr. Henry. You're going to go there or you're going to go somewhere wildly outside of it? What was, I'm, I'm sorry. What was your exact guess? I was 27 double. Mr. Henry is at 2880. So you stole my what I you stole my jump my pick from last week. I see how or from two weeks ago. I you see were 2772. You were nowhere close. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. From 27 double. Not close at all. Not uh, even in the same ballpark. Not in the same ballpark. All right. I'm gonna say 2662. Oh, look at you. Actually come up with a, with a good one as opposed to uh, throwing some nonsense out there because <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> well, no, it's a palindrome. Don't worry. That's it's true. It is. You do like your palindromic numbers there. 2662 for the meatball listeners. That is your vol market for this time next week. All right, everybody. That music means we unfortunately have come to the end for another journey through the world of volatility. I want to thank our guest, the Flowmaster, for joining us giving us a mid-year recap before we go mr Flowmaster, anything else up your sleeve or maybe some intriguing new additions you guys are adding over there on the trade alert side you want to make people aware of now is the time sir the floor is yours um we continue to put some very cool work into flex option alert and um we're hoping to have uh greeks and theoretical values on uh, on flex index trade very soon which will be pretty cool so that, that's what i'm focused on and i and i wish everybody a, a nice safe long weekend there you go stealing my line stay safe out there mr meatball what's going on in the world of the pit sir uh yeah we uh are doing a special on our uh, mentoring program so if you want to learn from uh how to trade like a professional uh, in a retail environment, then you need me and Andrew. Uh, go to optionpit.com. You can find out all about it. And uh, of course, read our VIX blog that we put out every day. Uh, it will absolutely help you become a better trader and navigate this market. There you go. Check them out, optionpit.com. For all of you on the on-demand side, that will conclude our broadcast week. I want to thank you for joining us. Reminding you, it is a long holiday weekend, so no shows on Monday. Back again later on in the week with our usual allotment of programs all the way through to another Friday, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. 
Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.